For more on this unfolding situation, we're joined first on the phone by Senator Lindsey Graham from South Carolina, who has played this golf course with President Trump multiple times and spoke with him this afternoon. Welcome, Senator Graham. Well, thank you, Trey. Yeah, I'm just very grateful uh, this was stopped. Uh, appreciate the protective detail, but there's so many questions to be answered. How could this happen in the fashion it did? So my day started. I did Fox News Sunday, and right after the show, President Trump called, and he was about to go play golf with Steve Woodcock. And, you know, I couldn't get there. I was supposed to play, but I couldn't get down. And he said, um, you know, we talked, talked a little bit about politics. And I said, well, just forget about all that. Go enjoy yourself. Have a good round of golf. So later on, not a couple hours later, whenever it was, he called me. And he said, hey, I'm around, surrounded by like 500 cops. Uh, they got a guy with an AK-47. Uh, uh, he didn't know the real details, but shots were fired. He praised the Secret Service, but uh, they had had him taken off the course. And he said, there's like 500 cops around. I said, are you okay? And he says, yeah, yeah. He said, I was 200 after five. So <laughs> he's... He's quite a guy. That's all I can say. And I'm just uh, very grateful that the worst didn't happen. And I'm pissed that this could happen again. And what you said about lowering the rhetoric and engaging differently is absolutely essential. I am not, on the one hand, surprised at all that he would tell you that he was too under. Golfers are just <laughs> different. You and I have both played this course. We have played it with him. I noticed while we were playing that it is incredibly hard to keep someone from shooting someone if they are heck bent on doing so. But it sounds to me like I mean, for a guy that survived two attempts on his life in two months, he, he seems to be handling it a lot better than I would be handling it. I've never met anybody quite like him. You know, he was is in a you know he was in good spirits and talking about you know he's you know the the, the news had not broke he called me he said you're going to hear it in a minute I'll just like no I'm fine I said well okay and it was just kind of hard to absorb that so you're getting called from President Trump about an attempt on his life before it even breaks and he he said he was two under we I played there a bunch with him so have you you know you start off and you go around the corner there and you get close to the you know, to, to the road and the highway, that par three. And, um, you know, as you go around the first five or six holes, you get away from the glove house and you get closer, you know, to the road and, and highways. So all I can say is this is, we've got upper game. Secret Service needs to go back to Treasury. They were one of the biggest elements of the Department of Treasury. And Homeland Security, they're a small group and a large agency. We need more resources. We need to clean house in terms of leadership. The protective detail are great Americans. And if we don't change the way we protect our our senior officials, uh, we're making a mistake. And the threat levels, it could be some crazy guy. I don't know who it was. But I know the Iranians have been targeting American officials. And the threat level coming from Iran against Pompeo and Brian Hook and others is at an all-time high. And how this happened, uh, I just, I'm dumbfounded. Yeah, you mentioned two people that when you and I play golf with them, they currently have security details. They can't go anywhere without a security detail because, because of threats from Iran. I know you've also noticed there's an advance so Secret Service team that kind of goes a hole ahead, and then there's a, a group with yeah. him and a group behind him. It just thank the Lord, the, the the advanced group saw this gun through through the fence, or you and I might be having a very different conversation. Trey, yeah, amen to that, and thank the protective detail. I know Sean, the whole team, they're they're great Americans. They work so hard. We just we need to change the model here. Get the Secret Service back over the Department of Treasury, where they were more focused. But, you know, Brian Hook, I was playing golf with Brian Hook, who's under threat by the Iranians. It's a protective detail. I was playing golf with him Saturday uh, when President Trump got shot the first time, 
uh, were out on the course, and it was one of the agents who told me and Brian they just tried to shoot President Trump. We were scheduled to play that next day, Sunday, in Bedminster. This is just beyond unnerving. You know, Steve Whitcoff was there as I was talking to President Trump. <laughs> and so, how you doing? He says, it's very dangerous playing golf. <laughs> so, you know, the, these guys were, you know, showing showing strong resolve. That, that, that nothing funny about it, but the amazing thing about President Trump, he was, you know, he just in good spirits, and he's not going to be deterred. He's going to keep keep pushing. And I just hope we all can learn from this and calm down the rhetoric. You know, Iran's the enemy. We're not the enemy of each other. We have different political views, but we just got to turn down the rhetoric when it comes to President Trump. Well, I know President Trump liked you personally. I know that you play a lot of golf with him. I am not at all surprised that he would talk to you on the phone shortly after yet another attempt or almost attempt on his life. And I'm not surprised, golfer to golfer, that he would tell you he was two under through five holes because that's just <laughs> that's the way golfers think. But thank you for joining us, especially on such short notice on such a serious topic. Thank you, Trey Gunther. You too. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.